Romans chapter number 3, we'll begin reading in verse number 10. The Bible says, as it is written, there's none righteous, no, not one. There's none that understandeth, there's none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way, they are, are together become unprofitable. There's none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher, with their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Some of you remember those days? What you used to be? Huh? Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, that even in our valleys you are the lily of the valley. Well, we're thankful when we're facing the storms of life, the peace speaker steps in and speaks peace to our troubled soul. Lord, we're thankful that, Lord, sometimes you got to break us in order to bless us. Now, Father, I pray that, Lord, you'd help us today. Lord, some may be need, needed to be reminded today. Lord, some may need to repent today. And Lord, some may need to be revived today. But Lord, I pray the Holy Ghost would not be grieved or quenched, but allowed to do His office work, that the will of God will be accomplished in our midst. Father, I have been in services many times when the preacher's preaching on a topic, but Lord, the sweet Holy Ghost of God will show me my need has nothing to do with what He's preaching. And yet, God, you'll be able to use the atmosphere of the service to deal with this old boy's heart. And God, I thank you for that. Now, Lord, you know what is needed. Lord, we thank you for everyone in attendance. You knew before we ever got here who was going to be here, and you knew what was needed. So, Father, help us use this unworthy vessel. God, I'm interested if anybody's here is lost without God, that today would be the day of their salvation. God, I pray for those that are saved, but... Lord, uh, maybe they just need an extra touch today. Maybe somebody here is low, they need to be lifted up. Maybe somebody here today is facing uncertainty. I pray you'd give them peace. Lord, you know what is needed. And God, we just pray your perfect will would be done. Use again this unworthy vessel. Glorify your name. Help us this day. We'll bless you for it. For it's in the holy name of Jesus we do pray. Amen. Amen. As a way of introduction, I want you to notice three words in the words we read. Now, I want you to notice, first of all, where the Bible says none. Look again in verse number 10. The Bible says, as it is written, there is, say it with me, none righteous, no, not one. Can I say there are none that are fit, none that are righteous? Can I say, uh, it doesn't matter if it's T.D. Jakes and his $5,000 suit, or it's some wino on the street with rags. There are none of us in our own righteousness fit for God to do anything with. The only reason I can stand before you today whole is because the blood of Jesus Christ uh, has washed me from my sin uh, and He has robed me in His righteousness. Uh, he made me fit for the kingdom of God, not me. And there's none fit. Can I say this? There is none that fathom. Look with me in verse 11. And the Bible says, There is, say it again, none that understandeth. There is none that fathom. It amazes me there have been people who have never cracked a Bible, but yet they want to tell me what the Bible says. I want to tell you something. I've been studying it for 47 years, and outside of what the Holy Ghost shows me, I don't understand any of it. Hmm? It's a spiritual book. And the only way you'll ever understand is to become a spiritual being. When the Holy Ghost uh, indwells you at the moment of salvation, He'll lead and guide you into all truth. Uh, but outside of Him, you don't understand. Hmm? 
I don't understand how a black cow eat green grass and give white milk. I don't understand that. I don't understand how I flip that switch and the lights come on. I don't, there's a lot of things I don't understand. Um, but when it comes to the things of God, no one understands them outside of God revealing them to them. There are none that are fit. There are none that fathom. Can I say this? There are none that follow after. They don't follow after God. Look what it says again in verse 11. There is none that seeketh after God. Before you got saved, if you're here today saved by the grace of God, you wasn't seeking God. You were seeking fame and fortune. You were seeking a, 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 a little blonde or brunette who went to church. Or you were seeking a car. Or you were seeking something after the world. Uh, 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 you were seeking to be the next Michael Jordan or something. Uh, you wasn't seeking after God until he came to you. Mm. How many churches did you ever drive by before? They didn't mean nothing to you until God started working on your heart. Then you noticed every church you drove by. Hmm? There are none that seeketh after God hmm? till God gets their attention. And then I want you to notice there are none that are fine. Look at verse number 12. The Bible says they are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. Here it is again. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. It amazes me when you try to tell somebody Jesus loves them and they need to get born again, they'll tell you they're a good person. Well, the Bible says there's none that are good. There are none that are fine. There's none that you can say, well, I'm fine today. And outside, outside the grace of God, you're not. There are none that are fine. Hmm? There's none that do it good. But fill all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. There's none of us fine outside of the goodness of God. So we looked at that word none. Now, there's another word I want to look at. The word's no. Look at verse 18. The Bible says there is, say it, no fear. I'm only doing that to make sure you stay awake. It's rain outside. You've got that tin roof. You know what I'm saying? Huh? There is no fear of God before their eyes. Matter of fact, about 10, 15 years ago, that was a saying, no fear. Hmm? You know, the Bible said it mm, 2,000 years ago. There's no fear before their eyes. They don't fear God. Hmm? Let's just be honest with you. When you was young, you wasn't saved, you didn't fear God either. No. I didn't think anything get in a car and crank her up. Nowadays, my kids, you know, they give me grief. Miss Mary, they give me grief. You raise them, you put them through school, you're good to them, you buy them everything you want. Sydney's got so many clothes, she takes up three calls in three different rooms, and they make fun of me. Because the other day I said I hadn't had traffic tickets since 1982, and they said, well, it's because you drive 40 miles an hour on the expressway. Well, there's a day I didn't, because I didn't fear. But I've got a lot of miles on this old frame. And there are some things you start to fear. But there's no fear of eternity till God reveals unto you there's a hell. There's no fear that you're going to face an almighty God until you realize it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. There's no fear before their eyes. You say, preacher, why do people do the crazy things they do? They don't fear God. There's no fear. Uh, notice the Bible says there's no flesh. Look what it says, verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. Uh, how many times have you had t people tell you they're a good person and they keep the Ten Commandments? They are a liar, and that's one of the Ten Commandments. God gave over 600 laws to the Jews, but, you know, we focus on the 10, and nobody's kept the 10. Right. Right. But even if you did, the Bible says there's no flesh that would be justified in his eyes. Right. Because our flesh has a sinful nature. There's no fear, there's no flesh, but there are no factors for excuse. Look with me in chapter number 1. Look at verse 18. 
For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in, in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Can I say this? You have no excuse to not believe in God. Isaiah tells us that the very conscience of man knows there is a God. When God breathed into man the breath of life and man became a living soul, man knows there's a God. Used to, America knew there was a God. You know, used to, you weren't allowed to testify in a court of law unless you believed in God. Now we got judges that don't believe in God. Hmm? They say they don't, but Brother Bob, every atheist believes in God. Why do they fight so hard against him? But God said, even if you didn't have the conscience of God, when you look at all that he's made, you're without excuse not to believe in him. Hmm? Seen little Brody back there. He's so cute. You can tell he's a woodyard. Hmm? Jake, three more. You qualify to be a missionary, bro. Huh? I was looking at little Brody. How can you not look at him and how precious, or any, any child, and see how precious they are and not know that came from God? Hmm? We're without excuse. There's no excuse. There's none. There's the word no. Uh, but then there's the word now. Look in verse 21 of chapter 3. But now. The righteousness of God without the law is manifested. You see, the scriptures make it clear that the law was given to bring us the knowledge of sin. Without the law, we didn't know what sin was. But the law couldn't save us from sin. But we find here now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested. Hmm? being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, here's where it comes from, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. See, Jesus did what the law couldn't do. Jesus made us right with God. In the Lord Jesus and through the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, we realize that Jesus died uh, for our sins, was buried, uh, and rose again according to the scriptures. Uh, and Brother Donna, when by faith we believe that in our heart, that he died for me and that he died for you, uh, and when you put your faith in him as your personal Savior, uh, not your faith in the baptism of all, uh, not your faith in coming to church, uh, not your faith in what you put in the plate, uh, but in your faith and what Jesus did uh, that he died for your sins uh, God will save you from your sin there's only two types of people in the world saved people and lost people saved people have put their faith in Jesus and Jesus alone lost people are still in their sin with God's help, I want to just, for just a few minutes, preach on the discourse of sin. You know what keeps people out of hell? Sin. Or keeps people out of heaven? Sin. Right. You know what sends people to hell? Sin. Right. Hmm? What is the one sin that keeps people from going to heaven? Sin of unbelief. But your sin will send you to hell. You say, preacher, what is sin? Well... There's a lot of things a lot of people think that is sin. Well, I'm going to tell you what the Bible says is sin. In James chapter 4, verse 17, the Bible says, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Romans 14, 23 uh, says, For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. 1 John 3, 4, Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Proverbs 21, 4, and high look, a proud heart, and the plowing of the wicked is sin. Preacher, what is sin? Sin is when you do what God said not to do. 
Sin is when you don't do what God said to do. Sin is when you don't have faith in God. Sin is when you, uh, 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 my dear friends, uh, 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 know what's right and you choose not to do it. Sin is having pride and arrogance to the fact where you think you're too good to bow before God. It's all sin. Anything that keeps you from humbling yourself and accepting the Lord is sin. John H. Jowett, a writer I like to read after, said this, Sin is transgression. It is the deliberate climbing of the fence. We see no trespass sign. In spite of the warning, we stride into the forbidden field. Sin is not ignorance. It is intention. We sin when we are wide awake. There are teachers abroad who would soften words like this. Uh, uh, they offer us terms which appear to lessen the harsh, harshness of our actions. Uh, they give our sin an aspect of innocence. But to alter the label on the bottle does not change the character of the contents. Poison is poison. Give it what name we please. Sin is the transgression of the law. Let me give you a few things on the discord of sin. First of all, there's the power of sin. Sin is powerful. It is so powerful, it takes things that are precious and make them terrible. Hmm? There was a lady in the Bible uh, by the name of Naomi. Naomi was in the place called the house of bread, Bethlehem. Hmm? Little trouble came, and her and her family chose to leave the house of bread and head to Moab, which is a picture of following after the flesh. Uh, she got down there, lost her husband and her two sons. She came back. This is what she had to say about the power of sin. Ruth chapter 1 verse 20, And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi, call me Mara, which means bitter. For the Almighty hath dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, and the Lord hath brought me home again empty. And the power of sin will take those that are full, brother Bob, and make them empty. It'll empty of anything worth anything in your life. Can I say sin transformed the creation into chaos? Sin transformed innocency into depravity. Sin transformed beauty into ashes. Sin transforms virtue into violence. Uh, sin transforms tillage into thorns. Uh, sin transformed Eden into a eulogy. Sin poisons pollutes and paralyzes everything it comes in contact with. Hmm? Did you ever see somebody that was just lovely to look upon and then their life gets pulled away by sin? The next time you see them, they look like they've aged a hundred years. Hmm? There are people that ask my wife all the time, they can't believe she's as old as she is. How old is she, Brother Doug? None of your business. They can't believe. She, you know why she looks nice? She don't have the scars of sin. She don't have the wrinkles sin and worry will bring on your life. Hmm? Hmm? They look at me and they think I'm an old dog. They say, well, you got all them wrinkles and everything, preacher. Because I pastor a Baptist church, that's why. Huh? There is power in sin. It'll destroy you if you leave it unchecked. A lot of people had good intentions, and sin wrecked their lives. Can I say there's not only power of sin, there's the pull of sin. In Genesis chapter number 3, we find in verse number 6, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, uh, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat, and we're paying the price today. It looked good, it sounded good, and by the way, it even tasted good. There was a pull about it. So you better be careful what you cast your eyes on. Hmm? Really, you ought to. Uh, uh, I won't turn there, but uh, uh, Abraham and Lot's herdsmen were having problems. Uh, uh, and Abraham told Lot, you choose which way you want to go, I'll go the other way. And Lot looked and saw through the plains of Jordan, looked like a great place to, leave, uh, to raise a family. Ended up in Sodom and Gomorrah, and he lost his family. Oh, it looked good. Hmm? You better be careful what you look at. 
I'm thinking about that prodigal right now in Luke 15. Went and asked his father for his inheritance. Father's not even dead yet. And if you study uh, uh, biblical law, uh, 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 he was the younger son. Uh, he didn't have an inheritance. All the inheritance went to the firstborn son. Uh, uh, but the father gave him an inheritance anyway. Uh, and he went uh, into a far country. Uh, and he wasted it on riotous living. Uh, but before he ever got a dime from daddy, uh, there was a pool of sin from that far country attacking that boy's heart. Uh, you better be careful. Sin has a pull. It does. I pull over every time I see a truckload of Corvettes. It's got a pull now. I'm telling you, you better be careful. And that lust of the eyes, the lust of the, of the flesh, and the pride of life will wreck your life. Amen. Mm. Mm. There's power of sin. There's the pull of sin. Can I say this? There's pleasure in sin. You know why people sin? Because it starts out feeling so good. We enjoy it. We were born sinners, and we, we got good practice at it. And so we like it. There's pleasure in sin for a season. Yep, sure. Hebrews eleven twenty five Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Talking about Moses. Yes, yeah, sin feels good but only for a while and then you got to sin more and more and more and more to try and find that same pleasure only to find that it doesn't come sin appeals and it appeases for a while but it leaves you broken bound and with a whole lot of baggage it cost you a whole lot more than you was willing to pay. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, there's pleasure in sin for a season. Just a while. But can I say something about that? The scars of sin last a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Can I say something else about sin? I want to deal with the pain that is caused by sin. You see, you see the billboards with everybody partying and having a good time. They never show you the backside of the billboard. They never show you what happens to them people uh, when Michelob takes and causes cirrhosis of the liver. Uh, when Budweiser makes them Bud Dumber. Hmm? When, when, when they lose everything they had because that needle in their arm, they just can't kick the habit. They never show you the pain caused by sin. Can I tell you, they never show you the children of broken homes. You know one of the saddest commentaries of America? The last thing I read, that there's just as many children from broken homes as there are children in non-broken homes. Divorce, the first three years of marriage, the divorce rate is 60%. Hmm. The majority of marriages don't even make it three years anymore. So many kids raised from mom's got one way, dad's got another way, and they don't know where they fit. When they're with mom, they're expected to act one way. When they're with dad, they're expected to act the other, a different way. And so the kid's in constant turmoil. Home, it should be a, an oasis, but it's not for them. Then a lot of times, mom and dad remarry other people, then they got other rules. They're constantly trying to please everybody. And the whole time, it's the child that's doing the suffering. Right. Yeah. Say, preach, how do you know that? Because my parents divorced when I was 13. When I was with my dad, never could talk about my mom. When I was with my mom, I could never talk about my dad. It was a constant struggle. Hmm. I know a little bit about it. The kid's the one that suffers. Mom and dad go on and do what they want to do. The kid suffers. It's pain caused by sin. We never see the family of an addict left to live on the streets. Because the addict can't get the habit. We never consider the victims of violent crime. It's pain caused by sin. 
somebody breaks in and, and tortures somebody at home and their children see all that, their children never get over that. We don't see that pain. We don't see the pain that that, that victim of that violent crime lives with, always looking around the corner, always looking in the shadows, seeing if violent crime's coming their way again. We don't consider the innocent who become abused. Listen to me, there's a lot of lies told, but there are a lot of people who are abused in America today. There's people abused by uh, priests, by preachers, by youth leaders, by parents, by teachers, by classmates. We don't like to talk about it. And say, how's it all start with sin? But we don't consider the victims of sin, the pain that it causes. That's why I say so many times, you don't know the problems behind the smiles when people come to church. You don't know what they've faced. We've come here to worship the Lord, but part of the church is to minister. And God's got a balm of Gilead that help people deal with the pain that they face caused by sin. And can I say, many times uh, they're dealing with the pain not as a result of their own actions. We don't consider the pain of, of the spouse of an, of an adulterer. We don't consider the pain of a community rampage with crime and corruption. Hmm? There are some places we wouldn't want to live, but we don't think about the pain of those people who live there. Hmm? We don't think about the pain that sin caused to the heart of a holy God. Because Jesus became our sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. And when the Lord God, the Father, had to turn His back on the Lord, the Son, Jesus Christ, it broke the Father's heart. And it broke the Son's heart. What caused that broken heart? Our sin. There's pain caused by sin. Can I say this? There's a price for sin. Hmm? Say, so what's the price of sin? Well, Romans 6.23 tells us it's death. For the wages of sin is death. I'm glad it didn't stop there, Brother James. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But there is a price for sin. It is death. Those that are not saved by the good grace of God, they're dead to God. They're at enmity with God. If you're here today, you are a believer, you've been saved, and you've got sin in your life, you too are dead to God in fellowship. Sin causes death. God told Adam and Eve the day they took that uh, uh, fruit, they would surely die. They didn't physically die, but they spiritually died that day. There are a lot of people who are saved to come to church, but you're dead spiritually because you've got sin in your life. The price of sin is death. Can I say, the price of sin is deception. Second Timothy 3.13 But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Can I say somebody who's a sinner will deceive? Right. You'll deceive others by lying to them. But it also said being deceived. You'll deceive yourself by lying to yourself. You'll say things like, I can quit anytime I want to. Okay, quit. And I found you won't quit outside the help of God. Mm -hmm. There are people who say, oh, I, I've got a handle on it. You do? Then why are you spinning out of control? There are people who say, no, I'm right with God. Hadn't opened a Bible in a year. Hadn't been on your knees and prayed. Don't come to church. You are right with God. But you're convincing yourself you are because you're deceiving yourself. That's what sin does. Hmm? Sin causes division. Hmm? It divides us from the Father. The Bible teaches if we regard iniquity in our heart, God won't even hear our prayers. 
And I say this, it not only divides us from our Father, it will cause division in your family. Hmm? And can I help you with something? The Bible makes it clear that God will punish to the third and fourth generation for someone's sin. The Bible says no man lives unto himself, no man dies unto himself. Sin has consequences. And Brother Tommy, nobody ever goes down alone. They always take somebody with them. Hmm? Causes division in your family. Hmm? How many parents don't speak to their children because of sin? Hmm? How many sisters don't speak to their siblings? And how many brothers don't speak to their siblings? How many uh, uh, cousins don't speak? All because of sin. The Holy Ghost unites. Sin divides. It divides you from the Father. It divides in your family. It also divides among friends. Hmm. How many of you have friends you used to go to church with, you used to fellowship with, you used to do things with, you don't do it anymore because they got caught up in sin. They don't want to be around you. You know why people quit coming to church? Because they get sin in their life and they're embarrassed. Now they'll blame it on a lot of things. They'll blame it on you didn't shake their hand. You sorry, no good front row Christian you. Y'all shake everybody's hand. They'll blame it on the preacher doesn't preach like he used to. They'll blame it on, well, the singing's just got a little too loose for me. They'll blame it on everything. The reason is they got a problem in their heart. Then they get out. Once they get out, they're embarrassed to come back. Hmm. Hmm. that's why I love about our church it don't matter how long they've been gone or where they're at we just love them when they come back Amen. you know why we do that because that's what the Bible teaches there is a judge but it's not you and me hmm. now, we're to restore such a one a spirit of meekness lest I, uh, thyself also be tempted hmm. Hmm. can I say it will cause division among friends but I've got good news. There is a pardon for your sin. Amen. You don't have to be controlled by sin. You don't have to let sin have dominion in your life. You don't have to let sin drag you down. You don't have to die and go to hell. There's a pardon for sin. The Bible says in Isaiah 1, 18, Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. I'm glad when God sees me, don't sees my sin, he sees himself, I'm glad he sees me white as wool. Thank God for the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. It doesn't just wash away our sin, it eradicated it. Hmm? 1 John 4.10, Here is herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sin. His son was the price for our sin. His son is our mercy seat. His son is the pardon for our sins. Uh, Romans 5, 8, But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died for your sins, so he could forgive you of your sins. Colossians 1, 14, In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Thank God I'm forgiven. Say, so you don't look like much, preacher. I'm not much, but I'm forgiven. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm glad my sins have been washed away. Yeah, never to be remembered anymore. Amen. I'm glad he forgave me of my sins. First John 1, 9, if you're here today and you're saved, got sin in your life, this verse is for you. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Yes, sin is a little word with detrimental consequences. But the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin Amen. there is a way to break the bondage of your sin and it's the blood of Jesus Christ you say preacher I don't see a big basin where you're going to wash me I don't wash you he washes you when you put your faith in him hmm? you say well how do you know you get saved you just can't help but know when you get saved when God moves inside of you you'll know hmm? Miss Taylor last week she came to the realization she didn't have the peace of God in her soul. But guess what? When she left church Sunday night, she did. Amen. Mm. The Lord hates sin, but he loves sinners. 
and he wants to save you from your sin. If you're saved, he wants to cleanse you from your sin. The Lord wants fellowship with you. The Lord created you. The Bible says we're fearfully and wonderfully made. He created you. He loves you, and he wants to have fellowship with you. Wants to have a relationship with you. The only thing that hinders that is sin. And the way to get that taken care of is come and ask him to forgive you of your sins. And when you're willing to ask him to forgive you, he will. Because he hates sin. And he hates seeing what sin does to your life. And he'll forgive you of your sins so you can have a relationship with him. He's done all the work. He's just waiting for you to come to him and ask him to apply the work to your life. Listen, if you're sick, you go to the doctor. Might not like going to the doctor. I don't. But I'd go to the doctor 15 times over before I go to the dentist. I hate the dentist, man. I mean, at least the doctor comes in, looks normal. The dentist comes in, he's got all this gear on him, and he's put, got your mouth wide open, hanging in with bungee cords or something. I don't know. I just, I just don't like the dentist. I got news for you. Going to the dentist is better than having a toothache. Hmm? Got a problem, you go. Miss Nett told me this week, she said, I made us our dentist appointments. I'm thinking, oh. She says, they're not till July. I said, hallelujah. Huh? Got a, got a problem, you go to the doctor. Sometimes it's uncomfortable going to the doctor. And sometimes I don't like to hear what the doctor has to say. But if I'll do what the doctor says, I'll get better. Hmm. I've got good news for you. The Lord's the great physician. And if you've got sin in your life, you have soul sickness. And you may not like having to come and ask God to forgive you, but I promise you, if you do it, it'll make you better. And you'll be so glad you did it. Hmm? Uh, I wonder. You know, two years ago at this time, I was getting tests for my cancer. Wondering what kind it was and what it was going to have to take to fix it and all that stuff. What would my life be like if I'd have said, I'm doing that? I wonder if I'd still be here. Doctor told Miss Annette if she wouldn't have urged me to have uh, the biopsy, they'd have never checked it and said it had been too late once they discovered it. I wonder if I'd be here. I wonder if I'd be able to swallow. This is all in my throat. Wonder if I'd even be able to speak today. See, you can wait all you want to, it's just going to cost you more. Or you can get it taken care of. Hmm? It was an uncomfortable April 1st and April 8th two years ago, but guess what? That's all I had to go through. huh? By the end of April, I was back preaching. Hmm? Haven't slowed down since. What are you trying to say? I got the help I needed. Today, you can get the help you need. Just bring it to Jesus. Old hymn writer said, bring it to Jesus, bring it to Him alone, and He'll take care of your sin problem. I wonder today, Will you give it to Jesus? Let's all stand, Brother Clint. You come get a song. You got sin in your life? The altar's open. If you're here today and you're not saved, say, Preacher, I don't know how to be saved. You come. We'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you how to be saved. Maybe you need to come and thank the Lord He saved you from your sin. Maybe you need to come, as Miss Nett said, and just start thanking Him for everything He's blessed you with. It'll be a good day in your life. Folks are coming. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We're thankful, Lord, you love sinners in spite of sin. Lord, we're thankful you went to the cross and died for us, shed your blood that we'd have a pardon for our sin. Lord, I don't know the heart of anybody here today. I don't even know my own heart. Lord, I know you're interested in helping people with their sin. Lord, if there's somebody here lost, they've never been saved, God, I pray you'd speak to their heart and through loving kindness draw them to an altar of repentance Lord I pray today for somebody here saved but Lord they've just let sin take root in their life they've come let you cleanse them from their sin 
God, just do a work around here today. Help, folks. And Father, we'll bless you for it. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.